Do you like driving on new tires, but hate changing the old ones? I've learned the right technique and tools can make changing tires a lot easier. We've got two sets of tires to change, so let's get into it. The hardest part of changing tires is getting that old hard tire off. You can skip ahead if that's the part you're also struggling with. But for completeness, I'll walk you through the whole process. The two things you'll need if you don't already have are a bead breaker and tire tongs. If you don't have one already, I'll link them in the description below. So the first thing to do is to remove the bead lock screws if your wheels have them. It's just a 3mm hex. You don't have to take them all the way out, but you don't want them sticking out on the inside when you go to break the bead. Normally I throw them away and just use thumb screws, which makes it easier to take on and off for next time. Next you'll need to use the bead breaker. It's pretty straightforward, just line it up with the edge of the tire and put your weight down on it. Flip it over and do the other side. For the bigger rear wheels, you'll probably need to adjust the height or maybe the angle of the bead breaker. You can usually find one setting that works for both the front and the rear, and then just leave it set. Now's the time for the tire tongs. Starting with the back side of the wheel, Put the disc in and jam those tire tongs under the tire. Then use leverage to line it up with the disc. Stick the pin in and you're locked. Swing those tire tongs out and the tire should just pop off. Here it is again on the back side. You should always start by putting some lube on the tire rim. This helps with both getting that old tire to slip off and the new tire to slip on. The other thing you can do is to try to heat the tire up. It's a lot easier to work with a soft warm tire than a stiff old tire. Here I'm using a heat gun for about 30 seconds. You can also use a hair dryer or just leave them out on a sunny day. Getting the tire off is the hardest part of this whole process. Start by squishing a side of the tire so it makes an oval out of that round hole in the middle. That should create a small gap between the wheel and the tire. Your goal is to stick your tire tongs into that gap and pry the tire off. Sometimes I feel like you really need three hands. One for the tire, one for the wheel, and one for the tongs. Sometimes, if you're lucky, the tire will pop right off, and other times I stick my fingers into that gap and finish the job. I happen to have two tire tongs, and I slightly prefer the one on the left. I feel like the more pronounced tip makes it so it doesn't slip as easily when I'm prying at it. You can also buy a wheel stand that basically acts as a third hand and holds the wheel in place with these screws on the base. It actually makes a huge difference because you can put a lot more force in prying that tire off without worrying about it slipping. With the wheel still in place, you can then immediately mount the new tire. It's basically the same process. You squish the sides of the tire and then use your weight to press the new tire on. Once it's on, squish it back in the normal shape. 
A pretty common mistake is if you don't squish the sides in enough, the tire will kind of fold in on itself. If that happens, pop it back and really squish those sides in. Use them as a handle and do it again. At this point, you've got one side mounted and we need to use the tire tongs again to mount the back side. Stick that disc back in. This time flip the tongs over so the grips are facing the wheel and then use them to grab the edge of the wheel and have the pin ready in your other hand to press it through once it's lined up. At this point, you're locked and you just need to swing those tongs out again to finish the mounting. Make sure the tire basically looks normal on the wheel. If you've got any big gaps, you won't be able to inflate it later without air escaping out. This one's close enough. Next, we need to put those beadlock screws back in. Here you can see I swapped them out for thumb screws. You just want to have it roughly flush with the wheel or maybe a little bit less and do that for all three screws. If you have an air compressor, get it started. My tank fills up to around 100 psi, but for the tool side, you only need it around 50 or 60 psi. Make sure you have an extended chuck so you don't have to put your fingers anywhere near when you're inflating the tire. It is possible to do with a handheld tire inflator, but it is a lot easier if you have a full-size air compressor. Here I'm using a tire wrap which holds that tire shape and helps push the pressure to the sides of the tire to set the bead. You can also use a ratchet strap or not use anything at all, it just means you'll need a higher tire pressure before it pops. Make sure you hear two clear pops, one for each side. Add a little bit more air just to be sure and then close off your beadlock screws. At this point, I like to set the pressure to a known number, in this case 20 psi, so I can let the tire sit for a while and check it later and make sure there's no leaks. Once I'm done with the whole set of tires, I usually let them sit at least an hour and then check the pressure again. If it's still holding that same pressure, then I know they're ready. Otherwise, you may need to break the bead, add some more lube, and try inflating them again. Store your new wheels in a tire bag to stay organized and keep the rubber fresh. Load them up, ready to go, and good luck at your next race.